Lesson 32, Application Security. In this lesson, we're going to take a very quick look at some of the options you have when configuring application security in SQL Server. Now, by no means will this be a complete set of all the possible options, but we're going to take a look at some of the most common and talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each. We'll look at how you can set up a single logon for use by your whole application, set up logons for each user, and we'll take a look briefly at how you can use application roles to further enhance your security. When it comes time to set up security for an application, you have a few options. Now this really only applies to custom apps or in-house built scripts. Typically a third-party app or a Microsoft app has already going to have built its security and you're just going to have to implement the security settings in SQL Server that are compatible with that application. But when you have custom apps that you've developed in-house, here are some of the choices you can make. Now one of the most common is to create a single logon for the app. So we're going to go in here to the logins folder on the SQL Server and let's say we have a new application called Policy Manager. So I'm going to create a login directly on my SQL Server for that application. And in this case I'm just going to call it Policy Manager, which is the name of the application. Now you'll have two choices as you did before. You can either do a Windows login or a SQL login. From a security standpoint, from a manability standpoint, I highly recommend you use Windows authentication. With Windows authentication, you have the added benefit of all the securities managed by a Windows server, passwords are reset on a regular basis, you don't have to worry about losing anything or screwing up those accounts. SQL logins is a little bit more overhead. Now in this case I don't have a policy manager on my Windows account so I'm gonna go ahead and just use a SQL auth but in practice I would recommend you use policy Windows authentication. So I'm just gonna set a password and in this case it's not very strong so I'm not going to enforce the password policy. If you're using SQL authentication however I do highly recommend that you enforce the password policy which will it'll enforce strong passwords but the other thing you do have to be careful of with an application is password expiration. If you enforce password expiration for an application then that password which is either hard-coded or stored in a con encrypted configuration file somewhere is going to have to be updated from time to time. So it's really again going to depend on your app. So I'm just not going to enforce any policy right now because I didn't type a very strong password. Again, not best practice. And there we go. We have a policy manager account. I could now grant this policy manager account access inside the user databases to all the objects that they need access to for that application to work. Now typically when you set up security in this way, the application has to build in some sort of setting for security. So it has to store usernames and passwords so that when people log into the application they can somehow be authenticated to use the application before that app then allows them access to SQL Server. One of the downfalls to this is if you're looking in to problems and I'm just gonna crack open a new query and show you this but if you're for example seeing blocking or locking or some sort of issue going on in your SQL Server and you want to go in and explore to see what might be wrong well, if I run a query like SP who, okay, when you run this, one of the things that it returns, as you'll see down here in the result set, just close this property window and get it out of our way. As you'll see down here in the result set, one of the things that can return is the login name. So you can see who's logged in. Well, the problem with using a single login for the entire application is the only thing you'll ever see here is the name policy manager. So you'll never see which user inside policy manager is making a connection. Now depending on how the application works you may see hostname. If it's a client that gets installed on everyone's machine you may be able to see the hostname of that user. But if it's a middle tier and the clients connect to a middle tier and the middle tier connects to SQL the only thing you'll ever see here is the name of your middle tier. So it becomes very difficult to figure out what user is doing something that might be causing issues. Not as big a deal if the application doesn't allow like ad hoc type querying, but some do. And if you have ad hoc type querying, it's really hard to track down what's going on with a single login. So another option that I've seen is you create a login for each user. Again, this is done by creating SQL logins. And you can see I have an Eric J login, a Tim login. I could create a login for every user in my company that needs to use that application. Put them into a role 
inside the database that they need access to. Down here, security, roles, and then based on their membership in a given database role, they could get access to the things they need access to inside of that database. So a couple problems here. One, again, you can use SQL authentication or Windows authentication again, but a couple problems. One, I now have to manage this security. So you can make it a little easier by using Windows authentication and granting access to a Windows group as a login in SQL Server. And that sort of helps you manage it to where if a user's in a specific group, they have access to this SQL Server and therefore access to the correct objects and, and items inside the database. Um, but, but here the problem now becomes all the users have a single login. So it's easier to track down what user's doing what. However, now, depending on the access, if you get sloppy with security, a user could log in directly to SQL Server. They could open up SQL Server Management Studio, connect to your SQL Server database, and if they have right access to a table in here, they could crack open a table and they could start inserting and updating and changing things, and maybe they have more select permissions than you'd like. So you really have to be tight with your security because there's no application filtering the user because they have direct access to the SQL Server at that point, whether or not they're using the app. So that's one of the downfalls of that method. That and, as I said, you now have to manage all that security on your SQL Server. So a third option that's commonly used, a little bit more advanced configuration, takes a lot more planning, but our application roles. We looked at them briefly when we looked at database security. So if we expand this security folder, look at this application roles folder, I can create an application role called policy manager to go along with my policy manager application not manger. There you go, policy manager. Um, basically what you're going to do here is set some really insanely hard password that the application would have to know. So you type that in two times and you hit OK. And I seriously doubt I got that password right both times because I typed a really complicated one. So I'm going to type a really simple one just for the purposes of this demo. Again, long complicated passwords are your absolute best bet. And then to this role, you assign permissions. So you can give it data owner, data reader. You can create your own roles that have the correct execute and select and insert permissions that the application needs. And then that this application role has that access. Then what ends up happening is when you create logins for each user, and see it even failed and said the password wasn't complex enough. So I'll come up with something a little more complex. See, this one forces it, and that's good because you want a complex password on this one. So hit OK, and now I have this policy manager application role. Assign all the permissions to that, and then you can create logins for each user, and all those users have the permission to do is log in. That's all they can do. And what has to happen is you have to run a procedure, a special procedure, to activate this application role. So the application knows the application role, knows the password for the application role, and after the user logs in, the application will run a command on their behalf to activate the application role. And once it's activated, the user will have all the permissions that you assign to this application role. So it's a great way of getting around that problem of now users can log in directly. When they log in through the app and activate the application role, they have read permission, they have write permission, they can do anything they need to do with inside the database, but the application's controlling what's happening. If they try to log in directly to SQL Server, they're not going to see much or have permissions to anything, and unless they know the password to your application role, which nobody should, then they won't be able to activate any sort of permissions on their own account. So it's a really great way to add that extra layer of security if you choose to create all the logins on a SQL Server. So in this lesson, we took a real brief look at a few options for setting up security for applications on your SQL servers. You can set up a single logon and assign that login to the application and allow it to handle user security. You can assign multiple logins, one for each user, and allow them to log into the application. But remember, that does also give them the ability to log directly into SQL Server. Or you can use a hybrid solution where you have logons for each user and then you use application roles to further narrow down their permission set and the application has to activate those permissions before they can be used.
So which one you choose will depend on your situation, but now you've got a couple options and you know what some of the common setups are for application security inside SQL Server. Live Lessons, the power of the world's leading technology experts at your fingertips. To learn more, visit mylivelessons.com today.